Good morning. Welcome to Live at 555 on this Tuesday morning. We are in 1 John chapter 4, verse number 1 today. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. John says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. If you remember back in chapter 2, John spent quite a bit of time talking to us about false prophets and false teachers that have come into the world. And now, starting here in chapter 4, he picks up on this idea again, but he warns the church, he warns us that we need to be um, not believing every spirit. Something we need to realize as Christians is that there's, um, there's more out there than just God's Spirit, right? Obviously, God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is supreme, and uh, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells in us. But there's a spiritual realm out there, and God's Spirit is not the only Spirit. We know that there's um, false spirits out there. There's, if I can use the term, evil spirits out there. And John wants to warn us and be sure that we don't get deceived by these false spirits. So he says, beloved, do not believe every spirit. Just because it sounds good, just because someone who looks good says it, doesn't necessarily mean that it is true. So we need to be on guard. We need to be sure that we're not just walking through life believing everything we hear, but instead, what should we be doing? He tells us here in verse 1 of chapter 4, he says that we need to test the spirits. Okay, instead of believing every spirit, we need to test the spirits. Um, in Proverbs, it tells us that a simple man believes everything, but a prudent man uh, digs in deeper, essentially. In Timothy, Paul tells us to test all things and to hold fast, to hold on to what is good. So we have a whole bunch of information. We have a whole bunch of stuff that comes at us every single day. And John tells us here in 1 John chapter 4 that it's up to you and me to be sure that what we're consuming is true. That what you and I are consuming is of God and not of a false spirit. And the way that we do that is we test the spirit and what we're testing them for. What are we testing these spirits for? We're not testing them for the coronavirus. <laughs> we're testing them for, it says this, test the spirits whether they are of God because many false prophets have gone out into the world. We're testing these spirits to see if they are of God. How do we tell if they're of God? What do we use to figure out if what we're consuming or what we're hearing or what we're being fed is actually from God or not? We use God's word to figure out if the message that we're receiving from whatever lines up with God. So we use this as the means to judge to test what we're being what's being brought to us okay it doesn't matter who's bringing the message we need to be sure to use God's word to to test it you might say well okay Hagen you tell me that I need to test every spirit and that I need to use God's word to test the spirits but but what if even an angel would come and share with me a message that might be contrary to what's revealed to us in God's word. Paul addressed this in Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 through 10. Paul says, um, even if we or an angel from heaven preaches any other gospel to you than that which you've already received, he says, let them be accursed. And he repeats himself there in Galatians chapter 1, verse 6. I tell you again, if we or an angel from heaven preaches any other gospel to you, preaches something that doesn't line up with what's already been revealed in God's word, he says, do not believe it. So even if an angel shows up to you in your room this morning and starts trying to tell you stuff that goes against what's in here, 
Paul tells us you do not believe it. We use God's word as the anchor, as the foundation of truth to determine what we're hearing from others and if what we're hearing from others lines up with what's revealed in here, we can trust that spirit, right? If we're, what we're hearing from others doesn't line up with what's revealed to us from God's word, then we just need to move on. Well, we need to move past it. It's so important for us to grab a hold of this because we live in a day and age where we are so, uh, where so much information is so easy to be consumed. We can gather information so easily and so readily, and we need to be sure that the information that we're listening to and watching and gathering and reading is actually from God, and it's not of a false prophet, of a false spirit. This was a problem in the early church because Satan wants to try to come in and deceive. We know that Satan is the counterfeit. So he wants to come alongside and he wants to make things look like truth, but just have a few little things off. That's what he likes to try to do. He liked to do it back then. He likes to try to do it today. John wants to warn us, do not get sucked into this trap of believing everything you hear. There's no need to do that. You need to, you need to know God's word, and then you need to stand on what God's word says and when something comes along in your path that disagrees with God's word, you just need to get rid of that thing. You need to move past it. You don't need to be entertaining it because it's not from God. It's from a false spirit, a false prophet. It's what we would call a false teaching. John wants to be sure we understand that because it's so easy. I see so many Christians that get sucked into this kind of stuff. They start watching these weird guys on TV, uh, their friend next door gives them some sort of weird spiritual book uh, that some guy writes up because he had some dream or whatever and they start to read it and they get sucked into these weird ideas and philosophies and doctrines that, that, that are going way out of the bounds of what God's word has already said. Man, it, 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 we just need to be a type of people that's like, here's the deal, if it's not in here, it's like, I'm not really interested. I, that's, that's great if you had an experience and you want to write a book on it, and that's cool, and maybe you could even read it if you're really big into reading. But at the end of the day, we can't be building truth off of other people's experiences. The only thing that we can grab a hold of to what we know to be true is God's Word. And like Paul told us, test all things, hold fast to, hold on to what is good. Because there's a lot of stuff out there that's not good. So when you find stuff, when you've tested stuff and you find out that it is good, man, you want to hold on to that. Because that, that's important. That's special. That's what John is encouraging us with this morning. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. And John does not want us to be deceived. Just a short one this morning want to be sure we understand that. We'll continue on here in chapter 4 tomorrow as he deals with this idea of false spirits, false prophets, and true spirits, true prophets. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, thank you for this day. God, we thank you for this Tuesday morning that you blessed us with. And God, we just ask that uh, you would be with us. And Lord, today as we uh, read stuff, as we listen to things, as we consume different things, Lord, we're going to have a lot of information come our way. And Lord, I pray that we would test all that stuff. Lord, that we would use your word as the key to figure out if what we're hearing is true and is of you. So God, I pray that, that, that as we uh, continue to gather information, God, that we would be able to use, God, discernment and your spirit and your word to figure out if it lines up with what your word has revealed. If it has, Lord, we know that that can be true. Lord, if it doesn't, help us just to be able to move past it and keep moving forward so we don't spend a lot of time, God, on stuff that's not true. Lord, we don't have, we, there's not enough time, Lord, to be spending our time meditating and worrying about stuff that's not true. So God, help us just be able to focus on the truth and be concerned with that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hope you guys have a great Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday morning worship is happening here in 
less than an hour at 7 a.m. So stop by the church here if you're out and about and you can uh, uh, join us for that. Men's prayer is happening at the same time downstairs in the basement. So we'd love to see you stop by if you guys are out and about uh, for that. If not, we'll see you tomorrow morning, Wednesday, as we continue on 1 John chapter 4.